Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. One of the first examples I ever heard of how you can use reharmonization as a tool of expression and as really the core part of an arrangement was Emily Rimler's version of Softly as in a Morning Sunrise. I pretty much just learned that song and I was just checking it out and I borrowed uh, this CD uh, on the library and came home with it and I was completely amazed at how different it was and how she could fit all these other chords than what I knew in the song on there. So I had to learn it and I had to check it out. This arrangement is really a great example of how you can take the reharmonization, the choice of key, and also the choice of techniques when playing the theme, and then let that all come together to create a really, really strong recording of the song. In this video, I'm going to go over that reharmonization, and I'm also gonna cover a few of the phrases to talk about how she's improvising over those chords, and also how she returns to the original course later in the solo. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting chord voicings or arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. First, I want to talk about the reharmonization, because I think the reharmonization is really the core part of the arrangement. And in this case, softly, as in a morning sunrise, is an AABA form, and the reharmonization is really only happening in the A parts. That's where we're changing the chords. Uh, in this case, Emily chose to, to modulate to another key. Usually you would play softly as in a morning sunrise in the key of C minor, but uh, here it's an E minor because that lends itself really well to a few things and uh, it opens up for using these harmonics when playing the theme. So it's just a nice touch and it doesn't really matter too much. The song is anyway just like a, a minor rhythm change. The original chords are all just turnarounds in, in the minor key. So. Uh, in the case of um, of this song, since it's an E minor, then the basic progression is really just E minor and then a 2-5 back to E minor, so F sharp half diminished to uh, B7 back to E minor. The reharmonization sounds like this. changes to softly as in a morning sunrise is really just a turnaround all the time so E minor and then F sharp half diminished to B7 and back to E minor and that keeps cycling and here her reharmonization is it's not really using a substitution of those changes it's really just a completely different set of changes that are there to uh, color the melody and to move along by themselves you can also tell that the way that she's made the reharmonization she actually comes out to E minor a bar later than what the original does because she adds this tag to the melody where she goes uh, in bar seven to get everything to fit because she's coming out on the F sharp minor to F major seven to the E minor and this in this case she's playing an E sus but in the context it sounds like an E minor chord. The main part of the arrangement is probably the bass movement so she's using the fact that first we have this long ascending bass line and then she's just walking up and then actually just walking back down again and then adding chords that fits with the bass notes and fits with the melody. She stays pretty true to the melody except in the last phrase of the A part where she's, as I said already, adding this tag to it to get that to fit with uh, the, the last chords because she's not coming out on the E minor in bar 7 but she's coming out on, on the F sharp minor and then also she's changed the last part where normally you would have which is sort of clearly minor and also clearly natural minor here it stays more like a more neutral and more pentatonic sounding and beyond the, the F sharp is still in there but we don't get the, the C somehow really coloring uh, and pulling towards a more tonal sound, at least that's, that's how I hear it. Uh, and she took that away by playing an A and a B instead. What really makes this arrangement work to me is the combination of the fact that we have sort of a strong melody with a stepwise movement in the bass, and then that that's really coloring and also taking away sort of the tonal turnaround thing that we expect to hear under this tune. And that's what makes it really effectful, I think. And then also the combination of that the melody is really simple and then you can color these different chords and still all of these chords are kind of staying in the 
diatonic realm of E minor. So there's nothing that's really going outside of the key. Everything stays within what we expect to hear in this key, but it doesn't move in a functional way. There's almost no places where we can sort of put this in a cadence. And if we have the feeling that there's a cadence, then it's in a place where we don't expect there to be a cadence, because that's where we expect to actually hear the resolution. The first part of the solo is still using the changes of the reharmonization, and then later the band goes into walking and they go to the original changes of softly as in a morning sunrise. The way Emily Remler is approaching soloing over these changes is actually the way that she's also using the reharmonization in the theme because the melody is very clearly, and even when she's changing the melody with a few notes that she's changing, really clearly in an E minor uh, sound. And she's using that E minor sound of the melody against the interesting or surprising sounds of the chords and the movement there. And that's also how she's soloing. So she's mostly just using E minor on top of those chords and once in a while she'll, make, she'll change one or two notes to fit the changes, but most of the time it's just E minor and then over these uh, unexpected chords. So this example is coming out in the last A part uh, after the bridge, and she comes out just simply with G and E on the E minor, then she does follow the changes to go to G and F on the F major, and then going back to just playing E minor on the next part. Now from here, she goes into a phrase that's using the E as a pedal point, and then it's a triplet uh, movement where she's kind of playing groups of two notes. So we have the E as a pedal point and then a melody no note on top of that. So, and then another scale melody, and then on the next chord, and then some blues, and then a minor pentatonic scale one. So really just using E and E blues a lot on top of these changes and then kind of using that the changes are going to color the notes that you're playing and that's going to make it interesting to listen to without having to follow the changes. If you follow the changes too much in this reharmonization, then I think you're going to be, you're kind of losing the point of how it works and you're probably also going to mess up the build up of your solo because you want to have sort of a place to build from and this is the first chorus so you can't go into just nailing a lot of changes. This entire album is of course dedicated to Wes Montgomery and I think this example, this phrase is really something that might as well have been taken from a Wes Montgomery solo. Uh, now we're in the part of the solo where we're going back to the original softly as in a morning sunrise changes, so the turnaround and uh, this phrase is pretty much sort of E minor and E minor blues using some triplets but it's also the way that it's a motif that's being developed really really uh, typical for something that Wes might play. The first part of it is really just E minor pentatonic, so... And then we get... That works as a call, we get a response. And then a repeat of the call. And then a different response. And then in the next turnaround, we, it starts out with kind of a, a further development of the original call, but just using the E and the G, so... And then we get a different kind of line that's pretty much just a B7. Uh, line so and then a B major uh, triad and then going back to the G on the E minor. This way of using strong melodic concepts like chord response and motifs really shows how Emily Remler is a very skilled improviser that can really connect phrases and doesn't just uh, play eight note lines but really uses different rhythms different motifs and is flexible with going uh, with phrases that are really on top of the changes and then moving without much effort into stuff that's really spelling out the harmony. I think that's a, really the mark of a skilled improviser.
the reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. <music>